So ladies and gentlemen, so you came across this video because one, you're either trying to build a system and you have no idea what you're doing, or two, you already know how to build a system, but you're trying to make it uh, as small as possible. So lucky for you, you came across the right video. And today, what I'm gonna show you is how to build a mini ITX system. Now I built this system way back in July, but uh, wait, was it July? Yeah, July. But the reason I brought it back to you here today was one, because I had to delete it from my channel, and two, a lot of things have changed since then, so I think it's about time we, uh, we came back to the subject of building systems. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now first off, let's look at the case. The case we used was the NZXT H210i. Now you might be wondering, why do we use this case and not maybe something a little bit smaller? Well, that's because due to the pandemic, everything I'm talking about like everything was basically sold out. Supply chains had a huge trouble with getting products into the US. So unfortunately for us, the only type of ITX system that we could build was this one using the uh, NZXT H210i. But don't worry, I'm gonna have alternatives in the description down below. So if you don't wanna buy this one and you wanna buy something that's a bit smaller, don't worry, I got you covered. Next, what motherboard did we use for this build? Well, of course, we have to get something that's smaller than the ATX, so we have to get a mini ITX motherboard. So in this case, we got the ASUS ROG Strix B450i gaming motherboard. Now there was another alternative to this, but it had mixed reviews and didn't look as good. And I have a good track run with ASUS. So if I have an opportunity to just use ASUS over another brand like MSI, I'm gonna go with ASUS. In terms of the CPU that we use, originally I bought the AMD Ryzen 7 2700 to put in the build, but because I upgraded my system that I currently use right behind me here to a AMD Ryzen 9 3900X, I decided to use the CPU that was currently in that system and use it for this system. So instead of getting the 2700, I got the 2700X for this build. And if you guys don't know, AMD has been at the top of the game when it comes to CPUs. So if I had to choose between Intel or AMD, I'm gonna go with Team AMD all day, simply because the price is super affordable and the performance is very, very good. If you're gonna compare it to the Intel equivalent, it just doesn't make sense because Intel is just much more expensive and the performance is just not as good. CPU cooler, psych. We use the stock cooler. We're not gonna spend extra money on it. Plus, the stock cooler is absolutely phenomenal as well and has pretty RGBs. So if, you, uh, if you're if you wondering what cooler you should use, just use the stock cooler that came with the AMD processor. What about GPUs? What GPU did we use? Well, we use the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 580. Now you could go with something that's from Nvidia, like the uh, Nvidia 1660, but I ended up going with this one in particular because one, I had it in my system already, so it's just easy to transfer it across, but also because it is an absolute phenomenal GPU, especially for the price. I think I got this one for like 160, and nowadays, if you're trying to go for Nvidia, you're spending a lot of money for just a little bit more in performance. So this is like the best bang for buck GPU that you could actually find, and I cannot stress it enough, this is a phenomenal GPU to choose. In terms of storage, I use two different storage devices. The first one is a Crucial P1. This is an M.2 NVMe. This I'm gonna use for the operating system as well as any programs that I end up installing into the system. And this is also 500 gigabytes. And then for the second storage device, I ended up going with the Seagate Barracuda. This is a two terabyte hard drive. So in total, I should have about 2.5 gigabytes of storage. One is just for the programs and the operating system, while the other one's for like files. That way the computer's nice and fast. At the same time, you know, we're not clogging up the, the main drive with a bunch of files and, and whatnot. And for the RAM, it was quite simple. I got two sticks, eight gigabytes each of DDR4, 3000 megahertz of RAM. Now for the power supply, one of the most important things about the system is the power supply. And you really have to pick and choose wisely because this system supports ATX power supplies, which is normally what you would use in a bigger build. But I highly recommend you go for an SFX power supply simply because the size of an ATX power supply ends up choking some of the air that would typically go for your GPU. So if you end up going with an ATX power supply, 
you might end up uh, reducing the performance of your GPU, which is something we definitely do not want. So for that reason, I ended up going with an SFX power supply, which in this case was the EVGA 450 watt gold plus. And what sort of made matters worse was that the fact that since it is an SFX power supply, the uh, cables that would typically go to your motherboard and so forth to power everything, uh, they're a little bit short, I'm not gonna lie. So I actually had to get extensions, which uh, this I actually got on Amazon and it kind of worked out because I ended up getting white extensions so it actually matched pretty well with the system. And if you're one of those people that are like, you know what, I don't wanna use any of these parts, I wanna use better parts or I wanna use some alternatives. Well, don't worry, I got you covered. In the description down below, you're gonna see an alternative list that I chose based on what is available on the market today. So if you can't find any of the items that I use in this specific build, don't worry, I have an alternative list that I will have in the description down below. And so that should cover everything that you need to know in terms of what I use for my system. But let's get straight into the build. For this build, we started off connecting all that we could connect to the motherboard. And since I had a Ryzen processor out of the box, we decided to start with that one. Inserting a Ryzen processor is quite easy. Just lift the metal arm and match the triangles on the processor to the triangle on the socket. If you did it correctly, it should be able to sit right in place without requiring any force whatsoever. Once done, close back that metal arm and you should be done with this part. We could attach the cooler now, but since it'll be taking up quite a bit of space for the viewing angle, we decided to install the M.2 SSD next. For this motherboard, since the M.2 slot has a heatsink, we have to remove that first, which will expose the slot to insert the M.2 stick. Once inserted, you should be able to hold down the M.2 stick using a small metal screw, which could be found in the motherboard box. Next, let's do the RAM sticks. Now, RAM is super easy to install as well. All you have to do is open up the bracket on both sides and you should be able to insert the desired RAM sticks into the mounted slots provided on your motherboard. Just make sure to line up the middle indent on the RAM sticks with the middle indent on the slots themselves. Don't be scared to add a little bit of force to get them into place. You'll know you did it right when the bracket arms lock back in. Now for the fun part, aka the thermal paste part. If you have a brand new AMD Ryzen processor and plan to stick with the stock cooler, then you do not have to do this part since the thermal paste will be pre-applied. But for everyone else who is using an aftermarket cooler or a refurbished stock cooler, you're gonna need to grab some thermal paste that came with your cooler, or you can go on Amazon and purchase one. To apply it, just put enough to make it look like a little P, like so. Once you do that, now you could attach the cooler. Since I'm using a stock cooler, I did not need to change any of the brackets that were pre-attached onto the motherboard. But if you have an aftermarket cooler, be sure to consult your manual to see if you need to change any brackets out. In my case, since I'm using a stock cooler, I won't have to change out anything, so all I have to worry about is inserting it. It can be a little bit tricky, but all you have to do is make sure you get one side hooked on before proceeding to the next side and then just swing over the little bracket arm to lock it in place. Once you finish that, time to insert the IO shield. And for this part, just make sure that you have the connections the right way to match the motherboard. And you should just go ahead and insert it to the back of your case. Don't be shy, make sure to use some force to make sure it locks into place properly. Next, you could screw the motherboard into place using the pre-installed razors that are on the motherboard. But see, this is where I should have done things a little bit differently. If I were to do this again, I would actually recommend not to screw the motherboard in, but rather leave it sitting in that general bay area. This is so that you can allow yourself some space to insert all the connections because leaving it for last will take twice as long as it did for me. Continuing on, you should connect all the cables that came with the case itself and plan where each one will go. That way you don't get anything tangled up or cause any ugly cable management to occur. The cables that it should come with are the USB 2.0, USB 3.0, the F panel, the F panel audio cables, or also known as the AAFP cable. Make sure to console your motherboard manual, which can be found online or in the box to make sure you know where each part is going to go to. But this is how it went for my system. Next, let's move on to the hard drive. Now, since this is an ITX case. I was limited to the amount of areas where I can install my hard drive into my case. 
I had to install it onto the bottom of the chassis as shown here. Once I got that installed, I went ahead and connected the SATA cable to the hard drive and routed it to the SATA port on my motherboard. If you have an SSD, you do have the opportunity to install it here, but since I don't, I opened this for no reason. Now for the graphics card installation, I like to leave this for last because it's one of the easiest things to change out within your system. Since all graphics cards vary in size, you want to make sure you get one that fits the opening of your case. Since my graphics card takes up two slots, I had to remove both slots from my case. After doing so, just release a bracket which is situated on the PCIe slot on your motherboard and you should be able to insert the graphics card right into place. Once that's done and the bracket clicks back into place, you can screw back on the screws on the back of your case to make sure that the graphics card doesn't move and it stays stable all the time. The last thing left to do in this building portion of my build is to plug in the power supply to its designated areas. Since my power supply is fully modular, I only needed to plug in whatever power cables that I needed. In this case, that included the 14 pin motherboard cable, the SATA cable for my hard drive, the power cable for my CPU, and the VGA cable which plugs into my graphics card. Now this is where I ran into my big issue. Since it's the SFX power supply and my ITX system is a little bit bigger than normal, that meant that my cables couldn't reach. Yeah, that was a big bummer to find out that my cables were just too short. But luckily they invented these things called extension cables, which they sell on Amazon and they come in multiple colors. So one week later, I was able to turn this bummer into an excitement because that meant that I could have cool white cable layout in my system, which I didn't have before. And in case you're looking to buy any of these parts, link will be in the description below. So for the extension cables, all you have to do is just clip them onto the existing power supply cables and then plug them in right into their designated connectors. And what's pretty cool about these extension cords is that they came with clip organizers to keep everything tidy and clean. Once I had all that done and I ensured everything was connected properly, it was time to close up my system and install the Windows operating system. To get the operating system, you need to go to a separate computer to get this process done. In my opinion, the best option and the option I've been doing for quite some time now is to go to eBay and buy one of the keys from the listed sellers there for less than $5. These keys are safe, cheap, and they can send it to you within minutes. So I highly recommend that you use this if you're trying to save a buck or two. All you have to do to download the Windows operating system is to navigate to the official Microsoft store and download your desired software that matches the product key that you bought from eBay. And make sure when you download it, you save it onto a USB or an external hard drive because we're gonna need this later. But before plugging that into your new system, we need to make sure everything is running right first. To do this, we just need to power on the system and boot into the BIOS. To boot into the BIOS, you just need to keep on pressing F2 or F9 upon startup. And once you get there, you should make sure that your system notices everything that you had plugged in prior to this point. Things you wanna check is whether it detects both your RAM sticks, your GPU, your CPU, and all of the storage locations. I noticed that the motherboard had my RAM sticks defaulted to 2133 megahertz, but when I bought this, I know that my RAM sticks are supposed to be 3000 megahertz. So all I had to do to change this was go over to the AI tweaker section and change the memory frequency from the dropdown list, and that should fix that issue. Next, go over to the boot tab and make sure that the drives that are noticed are set in the priority that you want, then we could reset the system. During that resetting process, you can go ahead and plug in your USB or external hard drive that has the Windows operating system on it. From there, the system should recognize it and the Windows loading process will begin. Once you get to the part where it asks for the product key, enter it in, but if you didn't buy one, you could just click on I do not have a product key and it will load the trial version. And for the rest of this part, I'm gonna leave it to you. It mostly asks for your preferences, keyboard layouts, etc. Make sure when you get to the part where it asks where you wanna install Windows, you choose the faster drive, whether it be the SSD or the M.2 SSD. That way you can take advantage of faster Windows startup times whenever you start up your computer. At this point, you should be very familiar with the Windows screen as we are basically done. All you have to do at this point is just download whatever you guys want, whatever programs, Google Chrome, whatever it may be. And one important thing to download are the drivers for each component with your system. For example, for my graphics card, I went to the Nitro Plus website and grabbed those drivers. 
For the Ryzen processor, I downloaded Ryzen Master. If you have another hard drive set up in your system, you will need to format it. In order to do this, I'm going to refer you to one of my previous videos that I made in the past on how to do this. Go down to your Windows icon, type in Format, and you should click on this option that says Create and Format Hard Drive Partitions. Click on that, and let me just open it up for you guys. This one up here is your M.2 drive. As you can see, it's unallocated. So if you go down to your, uh, your folder to see what drives you're using, you're going to see it's not down here. So we just need to format it in order for it to work. So all you got to do first is right click and click on new simple volume and just finish this wizard. Click next. Uh, you could assign it to whatever number you want. Um, just follow these steps. It's quite simple. You can leave everything as is for volume label. That's the only thing you want to change if you want to. Uh, for me, I'm going to call it a uh, one terabyte SSD and leave it on perform a quick format. For a new drive, you really don't need to do a long format. So a quick format will be just fine. So next and then click finish. And there you go. Now, if we go back to the PC, we're gonna see that it's right here. And once again, if you guys are looking for alternatives, take a look in the description. I also have a list of alternatives that you could use instead of the ones that I use for this build. So that has been my full fledged guide. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any questions whatsoever on how to build a system, any alternative parts I recommend, or if you just hate my system, you can let me know in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget, I do stream on Twitch. So if you have any questions as well that maybe I did not get to you in the uh, comment sections, don't worry, head over to my Twitch. I stream every Wednesday. I play great games and I'm amazing at all the games I play, as you already know by the name, right? <laughs> Okay, but anyways, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know on Twitch as well because I can go in depth with anything that you guys have questions for that need answering. So don't worry, just ask away on Twitch. And don't forget, I also have an Instagram. So if you guys wanna catch me on the back end of things, you could also head over there. I also post some cool stuff. And if you wanna reach me, you could also do that on my Instagram. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matthew. Thank you so much for watching. But as always, peace out.